Picture this, you're an archaeologist who not only unearths the past, but creates the future. That's the magic of Unearth's Innovation Project. Welcome to Minds in Orbit, FLL Stories. I'm Sophia, and today we're exploring how your team can tackle real archaeology challenges, from expensive GPR technology and bronze disease to site looting and environmental threats. We'll uncover the specific problems archaeologists face daily and how emerging technologies like AI and drones could revolutionize this ancient field. But here's what every coach needs to know. Stay until the end because I'll share the one crucial insight about problem selection that separates winning innovation projects from the rest. Trust me, this could be the difference between impressing judges and truly transforming your team's FLL journey. Let's dig in. Welcome back to Minds in Orbit, the podcast where we dive deep into the world of first Lego League coaching. I'm your host, Sophia, and today we're exploring one of the most exciting aspects of FLL Challenge, the Innovation Project. Imagine being an archaeologist who doesn't just unearth the past, but also has the power to create the future. That's exactly what teams will do with the Innovation Project in Unearthed. Today, I'm joined by Coach Silva, an experienced FLL mentor who's guided teams to multiple wins. Coach, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Sophia. I'm excited to talk about what I consider the heart of FLL, the Innovation Project. Let's start with the basics. For new coaches listening, can you explain what the Innovation Project actually is? Absolutely. The Innovation Project is one of four equally important parts of FLL Challenge competition, contributing 25% of the total score. Teams must identify and propose a solution to a real-world problem relevant to the season's theme. For Unearthed, this problem must connect to archaeology. It's the perfect embodiment of the season's motto, unearthing the past to discover the future. If we were to frame it as a modern-day AI prompt, the prompt for the season would be, identify a problem faced by archaeologists and propose a solution that can help them. That's fascinating. You mentioned in the research that there are specific challenges archaeologists face. Can you share some examples? The research reveals a wide range of challenges. There are financial and logistical issues, how to obtain funding, lack of electricity in remote sites, expensive tools like GPR, LIDAR, drones, and satellites. Then there are field conditions and safety concerns, working in dangerous sites, protection from the sun. We also see challenges in artifact management, analysis, and conservation, studying, drawing, photographing, digitizing, cleaning, and preserving artifacts. Some artifacts even suffer from what's called bronze disease. Bronze disease? That sounds serious. What about site preservation? That's huge. Archaeologists constantly fight against looting, vandalism, littering, and environmental effects like tree roots, erosion, and flooding. Plus, there are communication challenges, maintaining good relationships with local populations, making sites accessible, and sharing their work with the public. Now, it's important to clarify what archaeologists actually do, right? Exactly. Archaeologists study people through the objects they left behind, not dinosaurs or rocks, and they definitely don't dig for treasure or keep the artifacts they find. This is a crucial point for teams to understand. As Indiana Jones famously said, That belongs in a museum! Let's talk about the evaluation process. How do judges assess the innovation project? Judges look at how teams use the engineering design process. The FLL rubrics break this into clear phases. Identify. The problem must be clearly defined and thoroughly researched. Design. Teams need an effective project plan and collaborative idea development. Create. They should present an original idea or build upon an existing one, with a prototype or drawing. Iterate. Teams must share ideas, gather feedback, and incorporate improvements. And finally, communicate. They need to effectively present their solution and its impact. 
You've mentioned five key points for an impactful innovation project. Can you walk us through them? If you've made it this far, you must be enjoying the video. So why not subscribe while you're at it? Sure. First, focus on a real and specific archaeology problem. Use those challenge lists we discussed as a starting point. Choose something you're passionate about that's also manageable. Second, research thoroughly with experts. Talk to real archaeologists. Consider Skype a scientist. Read articles, watch documentaries. The more you understand the problem, the more innovative your proposal will be. Third, think innovatively with future vision. Your solution doesn't have to be completely new. It can be a creative improvement. Consider how emerging technologies like AI, drones, or 5G could be applied. What about the fourth point? Iterate, iterate, iterate. That is the heart of continuous improvement. Develop a prototype, physical drawing, or 3D. Ask for feedback from real people. And crucially, improve the solution based on what you learn. And finally, communicate the story with passion and clarity. Your presentation should be clear, engaging, and show not just the solution, but also the problem it solves, your research and design process, and the potential impact of your idea. You shared an amazing example from your superpowered season about a board game for the innovation project. Can you tell us that story? Hey everyone, heads up, you're about to hear a great story. Oh, that's one of my favorites. During Superpowered, teams were supposed to find solutions within the energy value cycle. Like many teams, ours started exploring energy generation. Pedal-powered boats, exercise machines in parks, wave generators, solar kites. After analyzing over 20 ideas and discussing with other teams, we hit a wall. Nothing seemed truly innovative. Then one team member had a disruptive idea. What if, instead of generating more energy, we think about how people consume it? I bet almost nobody knows how to save energy effectively. They validated this with a survey. Over 90% of people didn't know how to save energy effectively. That's when their solution was born. A board game that taught practical and fun energy-saving strategies for the home. And how did the judges respond? The judges and organization highly praised it, not only for its creativity, but also for its educational and realistic approach. It was the foundation that led them to win the Champions Award in that tournament. That's incredible. For coaches preparing their teams for presentations, what's your best advice? Remember, you have five minutes to present plus five to 10 minutes for questions. The presentation must be clear, creative, collaborative with all members participating, well-structured, covering problem, research, solution, and validation. My key advice, don't push teams to choose a problem just because it seems like a winner. Let them emotionally connect with it. Don't seek technical perfection. Judges value real connection to the problem and the learning process more than technical sophistication. Encourage students to tell the story behind the project with passion, authenticity, and pride about their journey. Any final thoughts for coaches just starting their innovation project journey? Keep evidence of the process. Photos, drawings, interviews, logs, everything counts. As I always say, a good project isn't the one that impresses, but the one that transforms even if it's just one life, one idea, or one corner of the world. Coach Silva, thank you so much for sharing your insights and that inspiring story. Listeners, remember that the Innovation Project is your team's chance to make a real impact while learning valuable research and problem-solving skills. Thank you, Sophia. And to all the coaches out there, trust your teams, let them fall in love with their problem, and watch them create something amazing. That's a wrap for today's episode of Minds in Orbit. Join us next time as we dive into robot design strategies. Until then, keep inspiring those future innovators.